Hello and welcome to Art Snaps. Thank you for joining me. I'm Katie. I work at Swindon Museum and Art Gallery, which has, we like to brag, a pretty amazing collection of modern and contemporary British art. And I've been making these podcasts or talks, whatever you want to call them, about the collection whilst we're sadly closed to the public under government guidelines. For 10 minutes every week, I choose three artworks from the collection to talk about, and this week I've chosen three pieces around the theme of movement. These are by Borlay Smart, George Malhewish, and Nicola Tyson, each of whom has used their chosen medium and subject matter to portray energy and dynamism in their work. So I'm going to talk about how they do this and also, hopefully, tell you some interesting stuff about the artists along the way too. I have quite a lot to say about each of these three pieces, so I'm going to go straight in with this painting by Borlay Smart called Ebb Tide on the Reef from 1943, which is just a beautiful piece of painting, which is kind of all about the movement of water. I wrote about Smart for the Art on Tour blog back in July, and in my research I was astounded to discover the great influence that Smart had on the vibrant art scene in St Ives. I was surprised because St Ives is so famous as a centre for modern British painting, but Borlay Smart isn't a name that you hear very often, which to me now that I know a bit more about him seems like a bit of a mystery. Smart moved to St Ives in 1919 when he was 29 years old and, as we can see, over the following years he established himself as a talented painter of seascapes. He also became a promoter and supporter of the artistic community there, encouraging the likes of Barbara Hepworth, Henry Moore and Peter Lanyon, who were producing groundbreaking abstract art at the time and of course went on to become some of Britain's most important artists. In his position as the secretary of the St Ives Society of Artists from 1934 to 47, Smart organised a large number of exhibitions of work by the St Ives artists and is therefore often credited with making them so famous. And in 1946, he opened an exhibition right here in Swindon. And it was at this point that this fabulous painting, Ebb Tide on the Reef, entered Swindon's art collection. According to the artist, it depicts an Atlantic reef of rocks called Clodgy, which was located one mile from Smart Studio, where the waves were the biggest. But in a way, I don't think that the location is that relevant in this case, as there's nothing much here to identify a specific place. It's significant because it really shows how practised he was at capturing the movement of water. It's charged with so much energy Smart has used thick, expressive strokes of paint to represent the frantic way the water rushes and flows around the rocks. And I think part of what makes this so successful is the way he's captured the reflection of light on the moving surface of the water. It's got that fractured nature where some areas are intensely bright and others have a deep richness which suggests the darkness below the surface. Another thing that's really great about it is the way Smart turns all of this into such an immersive experience. It's a reasonably large canvas at around 100 by 130 centimetres and within this space he pushes the scene right into our face so it's as if this area of rocks and water is right in front of us and we can almost feel the spray and taste the salt. When I look at this When I experience this painting, I can't quite believe that Borlay Smart isn't a bigger name in art, so I'm really glad that we've been able to take the time to appreciate him here. And if you want to read a bit more about that exhibition that he organised in Swindon and some of his other amazing paintings, do take a look at our blog at www.swindonmuseumandartgallery.org.uk slash art on tour and scroll down to the post from back in July. Next up, we have Action Painting from 1958, which is one of three expressive pieces by George Malhewish in the Swindon Collection. And as you can see, it's full of movement and positively bursting with energy, with those densely packed marks of paint, which look like they've been dripped, splashed and poured onto the surface. He's even scratched quite vigorously into the paint in some instances, which adds even more to the physical impact of this piece. 
The title references the work of the action painters in America who were making groundbreaking art during the 1940s and 50s. They established a way of painting which essentially rendered subject matter unimportant and embraced an instinctive dialogue between artist, paint and canvas. Perhaps the most famous of these artists is Jackson Pollock, who used techniques of dripping, splashing and pouring onto large canvases laid out onto the floor, allowing the paint to react physically to the hard surface. Malhuish's painting is much smaller than those that we see from the action painters, whose work is kind of characterised by its large scale. But he seems to have used the restrictive size of the paper, which is about 60 by 77 centimetres, to his advantage, creating a kind of controlled explosion of paint where dense layers of black marks largely obliterate a colourful background of blue, green and yellow. Now, I can't seem to find any information on Malhuish. I have no biographical information and very little idea of the intent behind his paintings. But there are plenty of examples of his work online and in national collections which show him as a very competent painter who was really experimental and energetic with his use of paint. The word that comes to mind when I look at his work is explosive and I do wonder whether there's a link between his abstract work and slightly earlier work depicting the effects of the Blitz and damage to Bristol during the war. It's interesting that after these paintings he begins creating these dramatic and gestural explosions of paint. But of course, this is just me speculating based on technique and context. And if anybody out there knows more about Malhuish, please do leave us a comment. We would love to hear from you. Finally, we're going to take a look at this great drawing, which is a recent addition to Swindon's collection by Nicola Tyson. It's called Something in the Air and it was created in 2015. Now I want to begin by telling you a little bit about Tyson just because she's a very cool artist. Early in her career in the 70s and 80s she had strong links to music and club culture in London and when she was still a student at just 18 years old she created a series of photographs documenting the London club scene which was called Bowie Nights at Billy's Club. In 1993 Tyson moved to New York where she still lives and established a space called Trial Balloon, which showed feminist art by exclusively female artists. And since her arrival in New York, she's found huge success, and exhibits regularly at the super cool and edgy Petzl Gallery in New York, and Sadie Cole's HQ in London. In 2017, the Drawing Room in London held a solo exhibition of Tyson's work called Beyond the Trace. And this was quite an important show because though Tyson is primarily known as a painter and also works with sculpture, photography, performance and spoken word, it's actually drawing which underpins her practice and gives her the means to be expressive and instinctual in her work. Something in the Air is one of four drawings which were exhibited in Beyond the Trace and given to Swindon Museum and Art Gallery by the Contemporary Art Society. All of them depict surreal, androgynous bodily forms of the kind which feature regularly in Tyson's work, which is concerned with issues of identity, gender and sexuality. So these imagined forms, which are kind of animal-human hybrids, are reimaginings of the female body as an experience rather than something which is constantly subjected to the social gaze. And I've chosen to look at something in the air because I think it's the most animated of Swindon's drawings. And after all, this is a talk about movement in art. And I love the sense of freedom that this kind of bird-like silhouetted form is given. The boldly applied graphite creates a strong contrast between light and dark, giving the figure great presence on the white page as it glides over the landscape below. It almost looks too dense and heavy to fly, yet it gracefully moves through the air with lightness and ease, and there's something so very free and powerful about that figure. 
and I've pretty much hit my 10 minute mark so that's all for today. Thank you very much for listening slash watching. If you have any thoughts or insights about what I've discussed today or want to give us any feedback please do leave us a comment and don't forget that you can subscribe to our YouTube channel if you want to make sure that you're notified when a new episode of Art Snaps is released. Or you can follow us on Facebook at Art on Tour 2020 or Instagram at Swindon Gallery Art on Tour. Thanks so much for listening. Take care, stay safe and bye for now.